So welcome everyone uh, to High Tech Institution YouTube channel. Yes, of course, in this video playlist, right, we are going to see next five set of scenarios, okay, on AWS interview with question and answer, okay. So here I'm going to cover, there are five major and important use cases, guys. Starting from first use case and scenario is AWS DR, disaster recovery. Second scenario is all about AWS security incidents. Third scenario is all about Performance optimization when you hosting your web application in AWS. Fourth scenario, implementing the CI/CD pipeline in AWS. And one last scenario, fifth one, which is global user-based application, uh, how we are deploying in AWS. Okay. These important uh, five scenarios as we are going to see in this part three video. So before that, uh, we have completed part one and part two video in this playlist. If anyone missed out, right? I'm strongly recommending uh, all of them to go ahead, complete the part one and part two, come to this part three, because every part, right, we are loading the bunch of, you know, uh, weightage and the detailness uh, to uh, questions and scenarios, okay? So the links are given in the description. All right, let's get started with the first question. Scenario 11, why I mentioned 11? Because part one, five scenarios go over, part two, 6 to 10, I mean, next to 5 set of scenarios over. This is part 3, right? So, scenario starting from 11. How would you ensure the disaster recovery and business continuity in AWS environment? Okay, that is the question. Basically, the question is all about when you are working in environment, if people are asking you, how would you ensure the disaster recovery and business continuity? Is there any, you know, impact? Is there any, any you know, nature or disaster or whatever? How will you ensure the business continuity in AWS? That is the uh, ask here. Okay, the first answer is all about to ensure disaster recovery and business continuity. I would implement a multi-tiered strategy leveraging AWS services. Uh, what we need to do in order to ensure the disaster recovery can be so. First thing we need to ensure multi-tier strategy. Okay, so multi-tier strategy in the sense uh, at the base level we need to ensure uh, load balance or application load balance is configured for your application or uh, first level we'll have you know networking then we'll have a load balancing on behind the scene we will have your instances so by that way right we'll have a high availability on base but is there any disaster happen still we may have a chance to access and explore our services guys okay second thing uh, i would uh, you know uh, utilize aws elastic disaster uh, recovery DR to replicate critical application and data across multiple availability zones or region. So between the region or between the availability zone, we need to properly plan for the DR to ensure the uh, data and applications are distributed. So if my primary availability zone or primary region goes down, right, still I would able to recover my service from the secondary uh, availability zone or region. Okay. Third one, creating automated backup using AWS services. Okay, creating automated backup using AWS services like backup or a snapshot for the crucial resources for data you know, resiliency. So when any impact happen, right? If you configure the automated backup or a snapshot for the particular cycle, even though if data loss happen, we will be recovering our data from the recent backup. Okay, that way we can ensure our uh, things and stuff. Okay, so employing AWS cloud formation for infrastructure as a code allow quickly recreating of all the entire environment if necessary. So we'll have to make sure our entire environment kind of, you know, either cloud formation or Terraform or whatever, you need to have it as an infrastructure as a code template. If anything happened in your primary region, quickly we can provision the resource in the DR region, okay, when it is necessary, okay. Regularly testing the disaster recovery plan through simulations and using AWS Route 53 for DNS failover, ensure seamless failover and minimal downtime in case of disaster. So we supposed not wait for the disaster recovery all the time, okay? So again, uh, disaster can happen anytime. It may not happen, it can happen though, it depends, right? So, but often, uh, you know, three months once, every quarter or six months once, you need to uh, consider DR testing. Like, even though there is no DR happened, you need to make sure the testing based on some interval, three months one, six months one, you need to, uh, try to deploy your backups. You need to try to deploy your, uh, uh, you know, whatever recent uh, DNS cutover or failover, those things you need to do as a practice. Only then when the actual DR comes quickly, you can uh, do the restoring process. Okay. So these are the five steps, guys. If I am uh, answering for any interviews, I'll make sure out of five, right? I'll be, if you could answer any three, that would be really appreciated. 
But if you're able to answer all these five, right, that is a highly, highly recommended one. Okay. Now let's move to scenario 12. Here the interview question is, explain how would you, how you would handle security incidents or breaches in AWS environment. The question is whenever there is a security glitch or security breach or any security related tickets comes, how would you face and handle? Okay. Answer. Firstly, I would isolate the affected resource by revoking uh, compromised credential and restricting access. If I came to know this particular resource is affected or this particular credential is affected, right? I'll also isolate it. I will not allow these resources to mingle with other resources in our environment. Okay. First of all, we need to isolate the affected resources. Okay. Then uh, we need to go and analyze the cloud trail log or AWS config for the real time monitoring and identify what is the source, how the impact has been happened by analyzing the log and the past history, right? We can uh, come into the conclu conclusion. This is the reason why this issue occurred. Next up, implementing incident response to like AWS security hub or AWS, you know, uh, guard duty kind of threat detection, uh, automated response uh, services are available in AWS. You need know, to make sure those are enabled. If it is already enabled, we need to check is there any response comes from those tools. Okay. Once we have identified from the log or the respective security tool, we need to, you know, uh, enable a AWS support or external, you know, any third party vendor who's uh, responsible for the thread. Uh, we need to be, we'll be working along with them uh, to uh, fix the bridge. Okay. To uh, fix that issue as early as possible. So these are the, uh, you know, best practices we need to follow when there is a security incidents or any breaches occurred in our AWS environment. So keep in mind that when come to security, it's top priority. Uh, it should be already your security related components are must be enabled in your environment. Okay. If not, go ahead and do that. Fine. Uh, we are going to discuss about scenario 13 now. So here, what is the question asked by the interviewer? How would you optimize the performance of AWS application hosted in AWS? Imagine you have a web application hosted in AWS. Now our duty is to optimize the performance. How are we going to do it? Firstly, I would leverage AWS cloud front for content delivery and caching to reduce latency. If people are accessing from different, different country, uh, people from US, people from UK. So by enabling cloud front content delivery, right? So what it will do, it will keep the NG server in each of their location. So US people need not to travel to our location to get the data. UK people need not to travel to our location to get the data or a web application. They will be having a cache in their region itself they can access from there itself. So we can reduce the latency. By the way, we can improve the performance. Utilizing AWS Lambda or Amazon ECS for serverless computing or containerization could improve the scalability or response time. Okay. These are serverless and uh, much more faster way instead of hosting it in your, uh, you know, EC2 instances. Uh, if any possibility is there, you can make use of these services. Okay. Employing Amazon DynamoDB or Amazon RDS with appropriate indexing and the partitioning for the database ensure efficient data retrieval. Okay, make sure uh, AWS has inbuilt uh, NoSQL and SQL database engines. Based on your need, you can go ahead and pick which one you need. So uh, in, in that case, right, the indexing and partitioning. So, so the data retrieval will be much more faster. People would get their data on time. Okay. So furthermore, uh, continuously monitor the application performance using AWS CloudWatch metrics logs. Okay. So this will help us to identify, is there any bottleneck? It will help us to identify, uh, we can fine tune anything for a bit more optional, optimational performance. Okay. As a proactive manner, right? We can make sure uh, to monitor all those things guys. Okay. So fine. So let me move on to next scenario. Okay. So 14 scenario, describe the process of implementing CICD pipelines on AWS. Describe the process of implementing CICD uh, in AWS. Implementing CICD pipelines on AWS involves automation and orchestration of software delivery process. So firstly, I would use AWS code pipeline to create a pipeline that integrate with the version control system like AWS code commit or GitHub. So almost guys, CICD, there are many CICD things are available, Jenkins available, Azure DevOps available, but AWS itself, we have a code uh, pipeline is available. So if you are using that, that is uh, recommended even AWS service, right? AWS also even recommending for the same. For the repository version control, uh, GitHub is there, Bitbucket is there, but still again, 
AWS, we have a code commit service available. You can opt for any one of this. Okay. This pipeline would include stages for building, testing, and deploying applications. So we need to make sure our pipeline have to uh, go step by stage. First one, it should build. Second one, it should test. Third one, it should deploy. So that's how it should go. Okay. And again, uh, AWS code build could be utilized for compiling code and running test. While AWS code deploy automates the deployment across various environments. So code build, use the code build for compiling the code and testing unit test case for those. And uh, code uh, deployment, right? You can use code deploy. So this way, it will be good for uh, implementing across various environments. Okay. Additionally, uh, integrating automated testing using AWS services, AWS code build and AWS code deploy ensure the reliability and deployment. Same answer, almost similar. Okay. Continuous monitoring with AWS CloudWatch allow detecting issue earlier in the process. When an issue comes right, we can easily address and identify that. All right. Fine, guys, you must be heard about my AWS internship program. Yeah, before going to the scenario 15, just a quick uh, detail we can see about AWS internship program. You all know, I'm planning to uh, start one internship program, guys. I'm planning to start one internship program. This internship program exclusively for practical thing, okay? Because in this video, you are getting theoretical thing, theoretical content. But when you wanted to practice it, right, right. So I'm I'm going to give you daily basis one one live project scenario to you in the internship program. Okay. So how it will be? It will be like you know around one month of uh, duration. It is daily. I need one hour of your commitment. It could be morning or evening, afternoon, whenever you are free, whichever the country you are located. That's not a matter. I need one hour of commitment to you. So what you need to do? Daily basis in online, either through email or through WhatsApp. I'll be sharing you the internship task to you. Daily basis client requirement. I'll share it to you. In your AWS account, okay, we'll set up a free tier account. On AWS account, you need to implement that. Okay. I will log into your account. I will validate it whether you have completed the task properly or not. Daily basis, I'll give you Monday to Friday. The weekly five days, right? I'll give you a task. Daily new, new scenarios. You'll have to implement in your account. I'll validate it. Every Friday, I'll connect you in live. Okay. So, I'll validate. I mean, if you have any questions or doubt, if you successfully completed and implemented the scenario, that's fine. If you are stuck anywhere, you're not able to do, you know, in live, I'll jump in. I'll explain you in every Friday. Okay. So, what is the prerequisite for uh, being part of this AWS internship program? So, you should know AWS concept, basic at least. Okay. You should have one degree and you should know the basic concepts of AWS. Only then you can understand the task what I am giving it to you. Okay. So very limited seats are available per internship program. I am planning to take, you know, uh, 10 members. Okay. Not more than that. And uh, the program fees, the training, the entire internship program. It's not a training. I will not come. I will not take you sessions and all. Only directly I will assign you a task. If you are working in a live project, what kind of task you will get. I will directly assign you a task. You will have to complete and show me. If you're stuck anywhere, I'll help you on. That is the way uh, we are planning to have it. Limited seats are available. Four triple line I have decided for uh, batch for the entire internship program. I think it will be a very minimal. Like it should be. Let's see. And whoever interested, right? You can see registration can be. You can just WhatsApp to this number nine three six zero four double seven one six four. You can WhatsApp to this number so that I'll be, uh, you know adding you into my uh, internship program batch all right let's get started i think this will be a really a good hands-on experience to you if anybody not having a uh, good hands-on make use of this opportunity that is what all i wanted to say okay all right so scenario 15 last for this video how would you scale and optimize an application architecture from global user based on aws what does it mean when your people are, you know, uh, sitting globally on different, different countries and different, different locations. So what is the way and how will you plan and architecture your application? That is the question. Firstly, I would use AWS global accelerator to route traffic through the AWS global network to endpoints in different regions, reducing latency. So when people are accessing from different, different locations, latency would be the first issue. Uh, that's what I believe. So we need to make sure. Uh, to enable the global network, uh, you know, accelerator or endpoints, right? Need to be placed on each location. By the way, latency will be addressed. The people from their region, they can access from their location itself. 
so anyone need more information about global accelerator right uh, please mention in the comment section i will make dedicated video for that okay that will give you more idea utilizing amazon uh, cloud front with the edgy location caches content closer to the user globally implementing amazon route 53 with the latency based routing direct user to the region with low latency so this is what i said uh, cloud front right content little network it will ensure the content are available very near to the user location. Similarly, Route 53 latency based routing directs are there. That will ensure the lower latency for the users. Additionally, employing AWS Lambda at edge for executing code closer to the user and leveraging multi-region AWS database like Amazon Aurora, uh, global database for data replication into the availability and low latency for the global user. Base. So there is an option available, Lambda at edge. So whenever people are using serverless, uh, so there is an option in uh, cloud front when you enable lambda at edge. So this will leverage the multi-region uh, concept when people are accessing database or Aurora or anything. This will make sure the lambda at edge will make sure uh, it will be accessible very nearest from their region. Even uh, your, your user base is available globally also. AWS are providing, AWS is providing uh, these many various options to ensure the uh, reduce latency for the better uh, scaled and the better performance based. Okay. Fine guys, you like the, all these 15 scenarios. So if you love this video, share with your friends if you feel whoever is helpful. And uh, many of them watching this video are not uh, subscribing to it. I would like to, you know, all of you to subscribe this uh, and uh, uh, mention your comments in the comment section, which will motivate me to create upcoming video. Okay. You can see in the description, I have mentioned my AWS. Uh, interview WhatsApp channel link. Okay, I would uh, ask. I'm I'm recommending all of you to go ahead and uh, join that WhatsApp channel, so that right daily basis we are posting the interview based uh, questions and interview related things in the group WhatsApp uh, channel group. Okay, make use of it. Thank you. Bye bye. Take care, everyone. We'll meet you on part four video soon.